Mill Serp Garage. What have we here? Looks like some type of centerfire rifle of some kind, right? Wrong. Mossberg shotgun. Model 183DB410. Bore. That's right, I didn't say gauge. Easy with the comments. Look at this thing. Right out of the Mossberg playbook with this uh, finger groove plasticky thing down here, which uh, annoyed me years ago, but I've come to love it. Kind of weird with this open design here, you know, with the, the split receiver. Um, I'm reading 13,500 PSI max for three inch shells with the 410. So, you know, no, no crazy uh, chamber pressures here. So you're allowed to get away with that robust construction here. This cool forend. Nice long barrel. Was it 23, 24? I forgot. And look, this is kind of weird over here. Huh? This uh, removable choke kind of uh, we'll get to that we'll talk about it let's uh let's break this thing down exactly what do we have here so it uh it takes two rounds into an internal magazine you see there's no no removing this this is just very mosaic like you know what i mean here i got some empty cases here we'll show you how this goes it's recommended to load this thing that first you slide one into the chamber and then you're supposed to push this down into here again like i said very mosin like actually the mosin is actually more advanced than this hopefully we'll get to that too if i can remember why that is that the mosin is more advanced so you get two rounds in here and then you're supposed to hold it down close the bolt over them and now you're uh you know ready to set off this one that's in the chamber and, uh, you know, this thing's made for um, hunting, so it's made to stay legal with uh, two in the magazine, one in the chamber, three rounds, and uh, specifically made that way for, uh, for hunters. Yeah, going bolt action. This was a 50s thing, you know? And this particular guy right here was manufactured from 50 to 53 but Mossberg they went through a lot of changes so this is something interesting that we're going to get into we're going to take a after we take a look at this guy we're going to delve into some books we're going to break some lights on the ceiling we're going to delve into some books and we're going to uh take a look this is the new haven Old school Mossberg. Didn't they move someplace else? Wasn't New Haven the first place they were at? 183DB. These numbers are important. 410 gauge, 3 inch. So 2 and two and a half and 3 inches are both uh, good. It's a nice uh, pig belly going on here. But man, this thing really, it's light as hell. And uh, it feels great. Let's see, what do I got here? Let's get some paperwork out. Let me get to this explanation here. Exactly what's going on here. So the Mossberg 183. The 183 is a 410 bore bolt action shotgun produced between 47 and 86. But we're going to uh, we're going to get into that. Like I said, you could break these down and date them by uh, little updates and modifications they made along the way. And not only that, the updates and modifications sometimes were enough where you would be considering it a, you know, a completely different gun. Whereas, you know, like a 183 DB, uh, if it was like a DJ or something like that, it could be enough changed where you'd almost consider it a different model. So let's see. Some nomenclature here. Five and a half pounds, um, 23 inch barrel, and uh, 47 to 71, 
that is really that is what I would say would be the manufacturing date of this guy, because that's the the Mossberg 183D. That's when they made it from 47 to 71, all the way to 86. Like I said, there were enough changes where you'd consider that even just a completely different model. But from 47 to 71 is where I would really put these. If somebody asked, when did they make those? So how does this break down exactly? Well, first we had the D. That was the original model. 47 to 48. Uh, it was distributed with two choke tubes. So these are those choke tubes, like the one that you saw on the, uh, that's on the gun. This is my modified one. Let's see, let's get a little closer in there. Mossberg 410M. So this is the modified choke. And the one that's on there is the full choke. It came with these two. And it's funny, they screwed around the outside and had the constriction for a choke. I guess they figured screwing in the inside was a little too small or a little too delicate. Maybe, you know, they were afraid they would break. So that's how they did it. They did it with these. And... Um, they were just those two, modified and full. And, uh, and it had supposedly had some kind of wrench for removing them. But you know what? They're knurled and you tighten them down. They don't, uh, they don't come off. But that's what, that, that's what that hole in it is for, is for that. I think I have a Winchester uh, choke, tube, choke tube removal thing that has that little, it's like a little wrench with the pin that you could tighten it. But I don't think it's necessary. So then the A... The DA, uh, they added a left-hand extractor. So that was from 48 to 50. Then you have the B, this guy here, uh, had a firing pin design change. And that's where I get 50 to 53. So that was somewhere in there, since this is the B. But there was also a C, where it had an... Ejector interrupter was added. Now, if you know anything about the Mosin, the interrupter would be, you saw how when I was putting these in here, nothing stopped it from just kind of bobbing up here and coming up out of the top, wanting to go right into the chamber. It's just, it's already just sitting there lined up. And even if I take another one and push it in on top of it, it's just going to do the same thing. See how it's just bobbing up. Where the interrupter, like kind of like, how it would have been on a Mosin would kind of hold the next round down there until this one was ejected, and then it would pop up, not just right away like that. So that was the uh, that was the idea of uh, the interrupter. But you know what? This, to be honest with you, this works pretty good just like this. Uh, it's not, I don't think it's the biggest deal in the world, but. Uh, but maybe some people had brought up, like, hey, how is it more advanced than a uh, rifle that was around, you know, around the, the turn of the century? So uh, maybe that's why they did it. And then uh, the E, oh, I'm sorry, the D53. So what do we do? Action, repeat, bolt action, ejector, interrupter added. Oh, and then in, in um, so the D was a change to the ejector interrupter. So not only did they modify it with the with the interrupter, there's evidently two different types of interrupters. Maybe it didn't work so well with the 53 to 56 model. So from 56 to 60 had a different interrupter. And then uh, they went to a slimmer barrel here with the E from 60 to 63. The F... A change to the trigger safety, the trigger and the safety lever, 68 to 71. That would be considered the end here. Oh, and then there's a G, also 68 to 71, change to barrel and front sight. Interesting. Now we move into this K model here now. It's not a D anymore. Now it's not G, then like. H I it's now it's going from D to K. And when we go to this K model, it says it's similar to the D, but it had a select choke. Okay, here's a picture of the select choke to see what that is. So that wasn't you didn't have to remove a choke and put one on. You would just be able to turn that and it would um constrict and open up the choke all on its own. So it was just like a uh, adjustable choke that was on there. 
But when they did that, um, it went to, it started changing to a completely different gun. But also the K went through its own modifications, A, B, and C, kind of like along a similar track to, uh, to making some changes to it. But uh, that is the history, let's say, of the D model. Now let's take a look. I have some stuff here, some literature here. Let's see what else they had. Well, here's here's the um, 410 shotguns that they had. So they had a uh, they had a model 173. It was basically like this guy, except it uh, did not have any type of magazine at all. It was just a single shot. You put a round in, you shot it, you ejected it. That's it. You put another round in. No magazine at all. The 183K is the one with the select choke that we just looked at. And the 183D is this guy. All right. Now, out of the 183 series, if you wanted to like really start looking around, here's the 183D down here on the bottom. You moved your way up to the K, which had the select choke, right? But you could also move up to, there was a 385, a 390, and a 395. These were all K models as well that were very similar to the 410K model, but these were chambered in 20 gauge, 16 gauge, and 12 gauge. And they had a detachable magazine. If you could see over there, that magazine, that magazine there is detachable. It isn't, I think it's the same number of rounds, but being that it's detachable, it was known it's still legal because it only had three rounds in it. But for hunting, you could pop that magazine out and slap another one in. It was supposed to be the quickest reloading legal shotgun that there was because you didn't have to slide new rounds into it to like reload. You could just pop in another mag with two rounds in it and be, uh, and have, so it was the quickest five shot shotgun that was out there for hunting um, where you were still remaining legal there was also you don't see many listings for this around this it's this, this literature right here might be the only place i ever saw this there was a 395 s it's a bolt action with a slugster barrel 12 gauge only it's pretty cool it has rifle sights detachable magazine and uh 12 gauge so it's it's kind of like uh you know with slugs, it's like a bolt action, definitely like a bolt action rifle. I mean, come on, it's pretty cool. Detachable mag, rifle sights, 12 gauge bolt action, slugs. Oof, that must have been pretty cool. And then, whatever, I found this article here on it. What do we got? Uh, here's one of the here's a K model. This, this is what this guy had was the K model. There's that select choke. And uh, since it's the K model, uh, that's kind of like the uh, recoil lug inside, um, like a rifle would have inside the stock. Anyway, okay, well, here's the really cool part. Let's, I'm going to show you. This is where, this is really going to get wild. All right, let's get out. Oof. Let's get the rifle out of the way for a little bit. See, I called it a rifle. Let's get to the different models here. Let's take a look. And let's get out my paper that breaks down. This is where I want to go here. The D into the K models. Okay. What I like to do, you can't, this is why some books. All right, see this Encyclopedia of Modern Firearms. This is the Brown Owl's book. Okay, Mr. Brown Owl. Encyclopedia of Modern Firearms, Parts and Assembly, Volume 1. My um, printing is the 16th printing, 1975. Just in case you're interested, because there, there are a million of these, depending on when you get them. They're older, they're newer. 75, this was the information they were furnishing. I love this book. Oops, sorry, guys. I love this book. This book, a lot of people give it a lot of, uh, a lot of, they, 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 they talk bad about it because it doesn't have any color photos. There's no real photos. It's all like kind of like 
artist renderings and drawings like this and black and white and it's mostly just text and kind of like exploded views like this this bores people you know they want eye candy but um i love this book and i'm going to show you why let's zoom in a little bit right here so here is where it breaks down the different models for the, the for the d here's the 173 single shot again there, a little less glare for you and uh, you know when it breaks it down here's the, the D and uh, moves into the K here's the K models and here's a 200 K that's a uh, pump action okay so these are these are 12 gauge see it says it's identical to the 195 except it's 20 gauge and that's the 185 190 series whatever okay it's really awesome guys we get in here now let's get into we want to look for 183d here we go so this is the first one 183d actually no i would say the first one would be the 175, remember? This was, I'm sorry, 173. This was the single shot. So you see, you don't have any of the magazine components. Look how simple this thing is, right? But look at the bolt. Look at the bolt. It has an extractor here and an extractor here. It's very interesting that this, the 173, the first release was further advanced than when the D came out. So then when the D came out, you could see now there's only one extractor. You can see that the other one's gone. And you remember, when we went from the D to the DA, was when we added the left-hand extractor. So, so the, you see the D, it's not here, okay? And when we go to, I need to back up just a little bit here. When we go to the DA, there you go. And the part number, if you look at the part number, so the part number for the extractor that existed here is 540. They changed to a different one. 613 and 614 right but look if we go back to the original 613 and 614 so the original 173 that didn't have a magazine the single shot was the first model then they came out with this with the magazine the advancement to the magazine but they made some changes to the extractor only from 47 to 48 they kicked right back into here again and went back to the dual extractors on the a model so we have that of course remember we have the b now in b firing pin design change okay so see what the firing pin looks like here See what the firing pin looks like here. This is the D. This is the D A. Now we go to the D B. This is ours right here. We're to the D B. When you go to the D B, look what happens to the firing pin. See how we changed? Changed from this. Remember here this spring in the back, long firing. See what it looks like. Changed to this. Different look. Evidently, they were having problems here. But look, we go back. <laughs> we go back to the original. What are we looking at with the 173? Huh? No, I don't know. Maybe, maybe if I look into this, the 173, maybe this didn't come out in 47 or 48. Maybe this came out in 50 and 53, along with the changes to the B. I don't know. That's an interesting thing to look up. It's either that. I would think that this came out first you know and then they reverted back so i thought that was really interesting this is why i love this book because then even you could you could look at the part numbers and see what's the same and what changes 
So now from the B to the C, this is going to leave us behind now, is going to be the um, B to C was the ejector interrupter added. So from here to here, we got an interrupter added. Let's see where that happened. And where is it in the parts I was looking earlier and I, I really couldn't see anything. I'm thinking maybe it's just... 622 it's the same spring the same you know the cartridge feed the magazine uh, what do you the um, the uh, magazine components seem to be the same this is definitely different different part numbers same spring and part here for the safety but this this changed from here to here. I'm thinking that's what it is. R738, what do they call that? They call that a, the ejector interrupter. There you go. There's the interrupter. It looks like everything else is the same. But now really look, R617 for the barrel. R739, is, is that the barrel? Yeah, that's the receiver. So they changed the receiver. So you can't just get this part. The receiver has a change probably to incorporate this sticking through to, to be the interrupter. Obviously, it would have to have a, uh, a place where it sticks through the receiver to hold the round down. So there it is. That's the change. And it's really interesting to look at the different changes, too. Like, look, they even had to change the magazine, R607 to R744, the internal magazine, but... R375, R607, R607, R744, a few different ones. So you see, if you need parts for one of these, that's why a book like this, this Brownells book is sick for that reason. But uh, this is not a rifle. This is not a gun where if you need a part to go start piecemealing through, and this is, what a pain in the ass that would be, right? Even the bolts, look. This bolt is R679, this bolt is R735, so even the bolt is different. You can even see it that dimensionally something's changed. So there's a lot of changes between these two, but um, these chokes are all the same. So you see uh, that, that you know, you could, uh, you know, use. Here's the, um, the D. Now here what's interesting with the D, the 183 D, D, <laughs> the D, uh, um, version it says and the 183 ka so the d and the k kind of like kept the same it was all the same the only difference was the choke so here's the choke right here here's that the difference in these screw-on chokes like uh, like these that's the that's this right and the adjustable one. So the adjustable one is two pieces. It's the top piece that screws over this piece that you could see right here. This is the part that gets constricted right here. And here's this screws over the top. So this R742 is what screws over the top and 741. So what do they call them? 741 is called the choke choke tube only. 742 is called the choke adjusting sleeve. So that's just the sleeve that goes over the top. And then together that makes the select select the choke. Um, but see how they, they lump these two together uh, design wise. So that's why the jump where you see so that's the D, what is it, the D, Model D? So DD, 1956 to 1960. And then it's the KA. The KA, 1956 to 1960. See that? So that's where they're, they're together in their years made. So it even it's corroborated here on the paper. So you see that's where they link up together to form the same design. Why I'm saying... It's so much separate, so much more separate than, than, um, than these K's follow along a 
completely different path now. Now there's no more 183 connected to it. 183 to stop, and they just continue on with this D. Whereas all so many different parts, I'd start to call this a different model after a while. So 1971 is where I would end with the with the D models. And uh, well, you got to get one of these books. You just uh, you absolutely have to. So this is where I love breaking down. I love breaking down this stuff. I really do. And I uh, was really interested in the different versions. And uh, I'm really interested to get out there. I don't have any shooting footage with this thing just yet. Um, but I, I might have it by the time I post the video. I'm definitely taking this thing to the trap range. <laughs> Guy's going to be like, what are you doing? Shooting a freaking 306 rifle at the, uh, at the clays? But uh, it's going to look a little bit weird. Uh, cycle and a bolt action because I don't think anybody's seen that. Do they? Do they even do that anymore? I don't know. So uh, you can uh, you can decock it by holding the trigger and lowering the bolt. You could see the uh, striker back here is uh, visible. It cocks on opening. You know, and it's like just very like you know like Mauser esque. You know what I mean? Very like rifle feeling because of that because of the cocking on opening kind of thing. Safety is back here, very positive, snick on and off. And, um, yeah, like I said, it's that Mossberg feel. It's that Mossberg wood, you know, it has that certain feel to it, the wood, the action, uh, how it feels. Check out these, these uh, like I said, these things, they, they come off nice. It took a nice clean. This thing was filthy. It took a nice cleaning. One of these, I couldn't get this off at first. I got a little scared, but... Um, when I saw this at the gun show, I knew it was going to be mine. I had been looking around for these, and I saw these ones. I like these kinds of jokes, not the one that you turn to adjust. I kind of like these. And I knew it came with two, but whenever I'd see one of these rifles, it would have one or the other. But this guy had this zip-tied through the <laughs> through the, um, through the the trigger guard, so I knew I was like, oh, I got to get that one. And uh, And you know what? These things are cheap. They're a bargain. They're fun to play with. This action is just boxed out. Look at that, how nice it is, you know? But like I said, it really was gunked up. It was filthy. Somebody definitely got their uh, their money's worth out of this thing. But I have a feeling they just go forever. I really do. And, uh, yeah, that's Mossberg. Right? Wasn't New Haven where their first place was? Didn't they, didn't they move in, like, 1960 or something? To, I don't know. I think, like, those original... Those original Mossbergs, I think, were... Uh, or New Haven, if I remember correctly. 183 DB. I kind of like the way Mossberg uh, changed the model numbers along the lines of their variants like that. That's pretty cool. That is pretty cool. So you knew exactly what you were getting um, if uh, they came out with a new variant and it was important to you when you were buying one that you got the interrupter. Or that you got the new, you know, firing pin that they were putting in it, you know. I could show you. This is, I could show you the, uh, this is the updated firing pin. So that was how they updated it too. The other one looks a little, you know, a little different. But it's kind of weird how it, I think that it adjusts here. I did, you know, it's very interesting that it does have that like Mosin feel to it, even to the bolt. But um, I did drop... It's very hard because this is very very stiff spring pressure here, but I did drop this so I could look kind of like Mosinish to see to measure the firing pin protrusion, and it seemed right. It seemed okay. It seemed to be in the right spot, so I just left it. But it looks like it is adjustable here. Could adjust the length of the firing pin, and uh, yeah, these lasted. That's for sure. Oh, and here's the. You could see this is the left-hand extractor that they added so that was just the original one here and then they added this one on the other side which is just like a clip it's kind of odd that it's not even like see how that looks it's just like a clip it doesn't even really have the claw this definitely pulls it out this does something to just kind of like locate it stronger or something interesting but it was the upgrade and it worked so the only upgrade 
on this one that I don't have would be the, uh, so let's see, if I stopped at B, would be the, the ejector interrupter and then the change of the interrupter. Let's see if we can see the change. That would be interesting to see. So as I go from C to D, oh no, I closed the book. Let's see. Oh, here we go. <laughs> So it would be from C, right, so we went from that to that. Oh yeah, there's the different interrupter, 736, right? 736, eject, 738, sorry, is a ejector interrupter. So there they go. They changed and it looks like there's a screw here. 756. Well, it's a magazine screw. So that's for the magazine. They did change the, uh, went from 738. Hey, wait a minute. It says R738 over here, too. R738, R738, but they do look different. Ejector interrupter, 80 cents. Ejector interrupter, 80 cents. Hmm same number maybe they didn't change the part maybe they just changed because the barrels are different the barrel numbers are different oh no wait 739 739 it's not the barrels aren't different see i gotta do my research i gotta do my research well there are some different things though look the screw that holds the whole action together is different different magazine there's a lot of different stuff i i think they changed stuff around the interrupter maybe with the way it hooks up but but yeah then when they went to the d it was when they uh when that's when it got incorporated in with this 183 k a hmm those look like the same part but i bet you the way it's incorporated into the gun is different that's what the change was because the change from c to d was the upgrade to the k 183 k model huh yeah, you could go, you could go deep, man. You could go deep, but uh, that's what I like to do. Let's see. Got my one last page here. Let me see if there's any info that I didn't get to. Come with me here. Let's take a look. Do I have a designer who designed this thing? Let's see, do I have anything here? Uh, nope. I gave you everything I got, man. <laughs> We've run out of information. I guess these Mossbergs were just designed by Mossberg, right? Wasn't it just Mossberg and Sons? Wasn't that who did all the designs? One of his sons? It was Jack. It was Jack Mossberg. There you go. 410. Three inch shells, huh? You just plop them in there. If you want, you just but you could just single shot them if you wanted to. At the trap range, look how easy that would be. You just strap it right there. Boom, bang, boom. Yeah, that would be wild. Bolt actioning at the trap range. Pull, bang. People would think you're shooting a rifle. It would blow everybody's mind. I can't wait. Um, I hope I either have footage now or I can get some footage, but it's always hard to get footage at the trap range. And my trap range that I go to all the time kind of changed around. They changed hands. It's like new ownership and, uh, things are a little weird, but I'll try to get that for you. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed the, uh, Mossberg model 183 DB. These are the kind of things you see all over the racks at gun shows and you don't pay attention to pay attention. This is what this hobby's all about. And getting a book like the Brownells book and pouring through all those exploded diagrams, it could be infinitely interesting. Um, I mean, if that's your thing, of course. You all take care, and I'll see you soon. Thanks for tuning in.